Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are about to shoot the shit on this 1-1 tied series of the Stanley Cup Final plus the NHL Awards. Who better to lead us off with it than Traden, the hockey guy? Yes, sir. Well, what, guys, I mean, what a Stanley Cup Final, I mean, so far. Um, I, you know, I, was ex- I think we expected Tampa Bay to be kind of their, their – speed up well, it was kind of absent in the first you know first couple periods of the first game but i don't i didn't expect the stars to be as exciting as excuse me as exciting as they are i mean they were extremely exciting in the last uh, last two games especially yesterday towards the end um, but we'll let's get into each game we have um you know we, the series is tied 1-1 game one saw the stars beat the bolts 4-1 um the first 40 minutes i mean you guys saw the first 40 minutes was all dallas james i mean i mean this is your team what i mean (laughs) was something was something in the was something in their wheaties or what the hell was going on in that first (laughs) minutes? i honestly just think that the lightning were tired man i mean the stars had like what four days of rest prior to that and then the lightning just got done playing maybe like what two days before that something like that the the lightning looks slow the stars did not and I think it's mostly the fact that the Lightning had to kind of change how they played versus the Scott off playing the Islanders team that kind of just kind of sat back and waited for things to come to them and played defensive hockey. When the Stars come at you, they're coming at you. They're physical. And it's, I mean, not to say that the Islanders weren't physical. It's just the fact that they kind of sat back, but the Stars attack you. And it took a while for Tampa Bay to figure it out. I wish it took longer, but they figured it out in two periods, which kind of scares me because then you look at the first – period of game number two and shit they were up three to three to zero that was scary yeah it was completely different um that third period was was just domination by tampa bay but you know any coach will tell you oh now you're gonna decide to start playing it's a little late for that you're already down three zero you know or three one um it's just a little too late um tyler did you did you catch any of that game one what do you think what do you think of the game yeah game one i didn't catch much live but i did watch the highlights um, yeah, you're right. Dallas came out. They looked fresh, ready to go. Uh, Lightning looked a little uh, surprised, I would say, by how good the Stars team was. Um, obviously, game one of the Stanley Cup final. I don't know what more you know motivation you need to come out firing. Um, and they never really recovered after that. But um, obviously, game two, they rebounded, came back with three goals in the first period. So I kind of see how that's going to be this series. It's going to be very back and forth. Uh, you know, both teams are going to go at it. I think it's going to be a great, great Stanley Cup to watch. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to the rest of the series. Yeah, the 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 series is is you you see it in games. I mean, there's always a debate whether you can bring in you bring momentum from game to game, and and I don't know that I necessarily agree with that. At least later on, especially later on, because you're seeing momentum shifts within games from period over period, minute over minute, um, and and it just makes for some amazing hockey. Um, there's one, something that really bothers me, especially with the first game, and actually you saw it in the second game, especially with Dallas, is that their scoring is coming from Hanley, Oleksiak, and Kivaranta. The only point for Big Dog first game was Radulov, you know, getting assist on the second goal. Um, Tyler Sagan has been still muted, you know, this whole playoffs, it feels like. Eric, are you concerned about the the stars ability to win a series if their big dogs can't fucking put up their no because <laughs> <laughs> they got that d and when i'm talking d i'm talking depth uh no homo actually Thanks for clarifying that <laughs> maybe we should cut that out tyler that we shouldn't be saying that word on here with during yeah, this man. time but uh <laughs> anyways <laughs> um they got that d and when i say that i mean they got the depth uh all the whole time they've been in the bubble, Sagan has been a little mouse, hasn't done shit for him. And all these other guys are stepping up, scoring goals. And that's what you need in the playoffs to win, especially in hockey. Guys like Haskinen, Alexiak, Girionov, Hintz, Foxa, Dickinson, Klingberg, who outplayed Hedden in the game one trade in hot take. Yeah. Maybe Ranta. They got a dude named Pavelski. I think it's probably the best finisher in the league. That I mean, he has been one of the best finishers in the league, especially in the playoffs when it really matters. But they got all these guys that are taking up the slack for the big dogs like Ben Sagan, um, 
Radulov, except I'd say Ben and Radulov have done their job. They need to step it up more. They want to win the cup. Sagan really needs to get it going. We, I think we talk about this guy every podcast, how he just hasn't really done much. He was like kind of creating chances last night, but it was too late. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it worries me when you're, you pay so much money for these big guys to to do to put up points and they're not. It 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 doesn't look good for Sagan, but I mean, uh, what I have to what I have to give him is he is solid five on five. He his Corsi stats are solid. He's not putting up a lot of shots on net, but he's making up for it defensively. Like he. He's not he's not leaking chances, which you can't put up chances for. Then then you got to prevent chances against and let Joe Pavelski of all guys just completely dominate the headlines. I mean Joe Pavelski. I don't know if you if I if I don't know about you guys, but Joe Pavelski seems like he's all over the ice. Whether he's in the penalty box or whether he's scoring goals, what do you got, James? About this guy. Okay, uh, so another way you could look at this, a different perspective, is that that top line isn't producing right now, so everybody else is stepping up because of that. So if and when that top line starts producing again, the Dallas Stars are going to be a scary team to mess with. No, absolutely. I mean, I'm kind of just waiting for it to happen because eventually those types of guys just kind of break out. So I think the Bolts will have their hands full even more so if that's the case. Um, but shifting over to the Bolts, I mean, I'm, I'm if looking at the last – Wait, wait, one last thing. Can I interrupt yeah. you? My bad. We got to mention that guy, Q Dobin, dude. Oh, it's you'll get – We'll get there. He was a bigger part of game two, <laughs> uh, but we're dude, he, he we're saving time for him. Let me okay, try. okay, okay. She ran because the last twenty minutes. <laughs> I mean, Tampa, t- t- Tampa. It was almost like you you flipped the switch, and Tampa was Tampa was flying. Um, I mean, out shooting the the Stars twenty two to two, a forty three to three advantage in shot attempts, just absolutely dominated the third period. And then here you here here he is. Anton Dobby Hudobin, came <laughs> hero, stopping all of the shots in the third. Um, I mean, Tyler, th- this guy takes over for Ben Bishop early on, early on in the quarterfinals, um, and now he sits, you know, nine and zero with a with a um, you know ninety three percent save percentage in the past nine games. That's before yesterday's game, of course, mind you. But in the third period. He has a 96 save percentage. I mean, I know we've been kind of pumping the tires of Miro Haskin in, but do you think that Hugh Dobin is kind of stealing the con Smythe from right under his feet? 100%. I mean, how many times do you get, you see in the, in the playoffs, the goalie steps up and is shut down. There's a brick wall in the net and wills his team to win a Stanley cup. I can think of one a few years ago, right over there, over my right shoulder, Jonathan quick. I mean, probably one of the best goalie performances we've seen in, re- in recent years. I think Hudoman right now is playing right up to that level. If he comes in and steps up and puts in, can put in three more wins for this Dallas Stars team, I think his name's going to be on that con smite 100%. You think if, if and when he does win that, they should give him like that rotten wool sock like in Harry Potter, you know, when it frees Dobie, when he's not like a slave anymore. <laughs> <laughs> like they should have it like in the joke. <laughs> good reference, good reference. Well, you, you know, that brings us to game two. I mean, I, I um, Kylie and I, um, we, uh, we watched this game together um, and it, it started with the Bolts onside. It's almost like the period three, you know, came back from game one and they pound the uh, stars into the ground that first period. Now, what worried me prior to, and I had said it to her, I said, the, the, star, this, the Bolts can't freaking score in the power play. Sure enough, on their second, second power play, they score back-to-back power play goals. Um, so, obviously, they kind of broke the, broke the seal on that. What worries me with the Dallas Stars coming from game one and game two is discipline. It seems like they're in the box a lot for among many different types of you know, penalties. James, is discipline going to be a huge factor here for the Dallas Stars? Oh, dude, yeah, definitely. I mean, before this game, I would say no, because like you mentioned, the Bulls couldn't score on the power play, but they figured it out. So now it's just like the Dallas Stars play physical hockey, and I say that over and over and over again. But you got to figure out, you got to find that fine line between too physical so you, and then just like playing your style of hockey. And that's going to be tough. If they can find the fine line when stuff, We'll start with, man, the fact that the Bolts finally figured out their power play, that's not a good sign for the Stars. 
not. Um, interesting that you say, you know, you talk about their physical play because we looked, we saw Kivaranta take runs at Braden Point in game one. Um, we saw um, Kucherov get completely manhandled yesterday. Okay, I, hold on. I have a lot of respect for that guy. He oh. got destroyed. And I thought he was going to not get up or just leave the game entirely multiple times. But he just came back, and he played really well after coming back. Guys. That, that guy is insane. He has, he has a lot of my respect. My, my issue with Kucherov prior to yesterday was whenever he starts to get frustrated, he shows it. He starts to take stupid penalties. He acts kind of pouty. And, guys, Kucherov is absolutely getting lit up. He goes to the back to wipe off some paint on his visor from the from the boards after he got slammed into the slammed in face first. Comes back, records what is three assists or two at least this yes to break the playoff the season playoff record in Bolt's history that was set by Brad Richards in two thousand four at twenty eight points. And we still have at least you know three games to go, and you know that's assuming that it doesn't go to game seven or game six. So, I mean, I agree with you, James. You have to give that guy pre- uh, credit to – I don't think he let the sp- his spirits break, and he actually threw it right back in the faces of, of the stars. And to me, it hurts a lot more on the scoreboard than it does, you know, getting hit in the boards. That, that's just how it goes. Um, <laughs> I will say this. After a dominant first period, I, I think that the stars really were h- hanging on. I mean, Tyler, did you see any of, of the second game? I mean, it, it, it looked like a completely different – Again, a completely different game later on. Yeah, absolutely. I, I caught I caught most of it. Um, yeah, all all Tampa Bay Lightning. Really, the first you know two periods, Dallas Stars came in the third, made it interesting. But I mean, that's got it's got gotta love this you know hockey. It's just what it is. It's physical. It's going to be close. Even when you think Tampa Bay is going to run run away with it after the first period, you know their sticks go quiet and they can't seem to score anymore. Star step up. That's what you love about hockey games. Like you mentioned earlier, there's so many ebbs and flows. There's so many momentum changers. Even a three goal lead in the playoffs isn't necessarily a guaranteed safety net. Yeah, no, I, I get it. Unless you get a TLDR bump, like mid game, <laughs> that course. still could be could be sketchy. Yeah. <laughs> um, dancing off one last point, um, Eric, you brought up the point that the that the defense on the Stars were actually outplayed Hedman on Game One. I 100% agree. I'm actually starting to be in the camp that Hedman, it's Hedman's con Smythe to lose if the Tampa Bay Lightning win. But he's not going to win it if he plays like he did game one. So I definitely, he definitely turned it around last game. I mean, Hedman is just a complete powerhouse on the back end. Um, but to, to finish up the discussion, um, you know, we may or may not be talking about a winner next week. I mean, if it goes to game seven, they're playing on Wednesday. So, um, so I mean, there's a higher chance that we'll be talking about the winner, um, you know, next week. But we might be talking about game seven, which I'm pretty excited for. So I'm going to go around the table and ask, who do you got, Tyler? All right. This is a really tough one. I've gone against the Stars all playoff long. I'm going to continue that trend. Lightning and seven. Lightning and seven. Okay. Uh, James? Stars six. Stars and six. And Eric? Stars seven. Stars seven. Well, I like that you guys are going to – we're expecting a long series, and um, I'm no exception. Um, I have Tampa Bay in seven, um, but I, it's honestly a coin flip. It's going to be such a great um, next five games. Uh, very expert. But, so that, that wraps up the, the series. We're going to talk a little bit about the um, awards. So the major awards, I actually, I actually saw how the major awards compared to um, compared to our predictions, um, starting with the Hart Trophy winner, Leon Dreisaitl, my boy. Um, we were right about that, boys. We, we, we predicted he was going to win. I think that was kind of expected. Um, the, one, the trophy I was trying to say he won was the Ted Lindsay. Um, that one is basically the, is voted on by the players as the best player in the league by your peers. So his peers also thinks he's the best player in the league this year, which I think that that honestly is a bigger, you know, is a bigger trophy in some respect, because that's your own competition. That's telling you, Hey, you're the best player in our league. Um, so I think that was pretty special for him to, to win that one. Um, 
The Norris went to Roman Yosti boys. Um, we thought it was going to be John Carlson. Um, do we have a on that? Are, are we ex- it, really? I think it could have gone to any th- any of the three. It was Hedman, uh, Roman Yosti, or John Carlson. Are we are we surprised by this, or was it kind of a coin flip for all of us? Yeah, I, mean, I think I flip. think yeah, I think that was the closest voting of all the awards, I believe, that at least I've seen in terms of you know first place, second place votes, and total votes. Um, so yeah, for me, it was a coin flip. Um, yeah, that's all I got. I mean, you think, and it, a lot of it's based off the season mainly, right? Because like, obviously, if it were to be now, like you'd think Hedman. Oh, Hedman, 100%. He's in the, the damn cup final and carried his team there. Right. But the season, thing is, these trophies don't count the playoffs, which it's, t- it's tough for those players. Why an Oilers players. player won the MVP, dude. Mm-hmm. Well, sorry? Yeah, exactly. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, the Vesno Trophy went to Connor Hellebuck. Guys, to me, this was like a slam dunk. I mean, he was the only thing in keeping the puck out of the net for the Jets. That was an alley oop slam dunk. LeBron James, boom, 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 done. Um, <laughs> the Calder Trophy was a little bit surprising. We had Hughes winning, but Kale McCarr won. This is another coin flip for me. I think it could have went to either one of them. I think. To Eric's point on the Vesna, I'm sorry, on the Norris, I think that Hughes played much better in the playoffs than he did in the regular season, but I think it could have went to either one. What do you, what do you guys think? Totally agree yeah. with you. Fair. Yeah, I agree. Also, dude, why, why does NHL have to call these trophies like Vesna, Norris? No one knows what it means. I feel uh-huh. like I get that's like named after someone and that's all good. I mean, baseball does it too, but they still call it MVP rookie of the year. It just makes it confu- – because I always – I mean, I'm a big hockey guy. I follow hockey. But it's like I can't remember which one's which every time. No, I, I always have to I look have it no up. no clue. No, no idea. idea. I should have started by saying who, which one's which. Norris was the best defense. Yeah. And that Calder was rookie. Selkie, this one is is the most confusing for many. Uh, the Selkie Trophy went to the best defensive forward in the league. Um, it it was so confusing that even James asked me, he's like, "Why are we voting on a centerman for this when it's because it's your most important player, defensive forward?" Which weirdly enough is actually turning into the player who has a great season defensively, but also has a shit ton of points, which I think is kind of stupid. I, because if 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 we were actually going by the best defensive forward, I think that that uh, um, Patrice Bergeron would be winning it every year. I mean, that's the reality of it. But Hope Tsar. Sean, well, and he's another candidate that was always up there as well. Sean Couturier won this year, and that's who you guys voted on. I did not vote for him, but you guys did. Um, so I guess it was no sh- shock there. I'm an idiot. You guys are right. <laughs> who did you vote for? I voted for Patrice Bergeron because in okay. in my mind what? he. He's just a perennial defensive forward. You could, would you call it like most well player on the ice? Like that's what I would call Bergeron. That's probably what I'd call Kopitar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, but it seems like the, the the Selkie winner has to go above and beyond offensively while also keeping his defensive game intact, and it just doesn't make sense to me. Because if we're really going to the crux of what that that award is it should be going to the best defensive forward which i'm sorry is patrice bergeron or kopitar every single freaking year um this one pissed me off the most the jack adams went to bruce cassidy and we had john tortorella winning here's my rant right now what the fuck (laughs) bruce cassidy is given a fantastic team on on a silver platter said hey Please take this team to the playoffs. Guys, I could coach that team to the fucking playoffs. They have everybody. They have no issues. But John Tortorella loses uh, Panarin. Uh, he loses Bobrovsky. Duchesne. Duchesne. He loses a shit ton of players. He has Seth Jones, who's, who's an up-and-coming, for surely going to be one of his in his life. But he doesn't really have much more than that. And he takes him to the Stanley Cup playoffs. And he almost you know, moves on against Tampa Bay again. So am I wrong in thinking that's absolute bullshit or what? I mean, Eric, what do you think about this? Yeah, I think it should have gone to Tortorella. Just kind of going back to what you're saying with the uh, the Selkie, like how Bergeron would always be getting it. It's like it should be the coach that has, like, the team that everyone counts out from the beginning of the season, which is was the Blue Jackets. And the coach that takes a team like that and brings them to the playoffs and almost, you know, 
I mean, they showed signs of they they dominate they dominated the Leafs in that game five. Uh, they went into a few overtime games with Tampa that could have been different. Like they could have been in uh, in a deeper series with Tampa, but you, Tortorella probably should have got it because he had a team of, of guys that all the guys left, and it was the thunder of basketball this year. Just how everyone counted them out, and they were in the playoffs could have gone deeper. Right, uh, Tyler, uh, James, you guys have any have anything to say about this award or any of the other awards before uh, I move on to my last bit of information? For this award, I think it's just very subjective, man. It's a, you bring it back to like an MVP for like basketball or for baseball or something, and it's just like, is it really the best person in the league, or is it the best person on a team, or is it the best person on a winning team? Those are the questions you have to ask, and that's what makes this super subjective, which is yeah. why it's kind of like a coin flip too for this. Because yeah. if I mean, if it, if you're just looking at records, it's the team that has the best record should have the coach of the year. True, but it's not. Either. My yeah. favorite in it. NHL award, the Lady Bing Trophy goes to the oh, nicest guy in hockey. As the as the we're big, talking about that one, biggest pansy ass. <laughs> <laughs> no, who won nice guy award? Nice guy award. Yeah, the nice guy award. <laughs> yeah, of course, you'd like that one. Who won the nice guy award? Um, I have, have no, to one knows, no one cares. They don't care about that one. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was Dreisaitl, wasn't it? <laughs> no, it, it wasn't Dreisaitl. It was. Um, let me find out. Just Kobitar won it one year, but that's I think he won the Selkie. It was well. probably Kachuk, right? No, Nate was, McKinnon. Um, I mean, he deserves something. He deserves yeah, something. Kachuk. He deserves it's something. Kind of the, the shittiest one to win. Um, well, it wasn't Luke guys. No, God, no. Um, <laughs> imagine that. Um, I just want to quickly update everyone. We did get some information about the next season, um, so I'm just going to kind of spit that out before uh, you know I kind of forget it. The NHL is still planning for a full 82-game season with the usual four-round best-of-seven playoff series. Um, Gary Bettman anticipates playing that full season, but how and when is something that remains to be seen. Um, we don't have all the information on that, and they don't to make that decision. Um, and anything right now would be speculation, but the goal is to get back as close to normalcy as possible, which I think we all could, could uh, really use right now. The NHL has initially committed December 1st, Seems like probably going to be pushed into later December, if not January. And in my opinion, that's probably better. Let these guys get out of the bubble, be with their families through the holidays, get through the holidays, and maybe restart then. Um, although Gary's preference would be to stay out of the summer as much as possible. Um, fans typically like, like watching the you know hockey in the fall, winter, and spring. Um, so having it later is it would kind of it kind of seems like fans tune out. But I don't know how much I think they had to do it this this the way they did this year, obviously. Um, but they're looking at any solutions. So the biggest question mark is what are they going to do with the Winter Classic on January 1st? Um, my guess is it's probably not going to go through if they can't get enough fan, any fans in there. So um, they'll have to, you know, reschedule that. But um, that, that, that's kind of where we're at. Um, there's no additional information, but I will keep everybody updated when we do get more. Um, but, guys, we are a week away from ending hockey. I mean, hockey's done in a week, in a day maybe. and and uh, I'm sad about it. <laughs> wow, Traden. Uh, way, way to I'm end on that on. note. No, I'm kidding. Uh, yeah, I mean, of course, you know, at TLDR, we always talk about seasons ahead of seasons while seasons are going on. Um,